Hey, we have a real problem in America. This drug epidemic that we've been facing continues to grow out of control. Every day, more and more people are affected. More and more pain and suffering is being experienced by really every member in our community, in our society. There's an estimated 30 million people that are struggling with addiction today, but for those 30 million people, that's about one in 10 people in America, those 30 million people, the experience that they have, the effects of their addiction and their behaviors influences or touches the lives of everybody else in America. Even though there's 70,000 people that's a, in, uh, that die each year because of drug overdose or drug or complications from their substance or behavioral addictions, which is a tremendous number of people that we're losing. But beyond that, there's many hundreds of thousands of people who have effectively lost their life because they've lost their ability to contribute, to experience the joy, to experience the fulfillment, to enjoy their families, enjoy the work that they're doing, make a contribution to the society and to America. And the problem keeps getting worse every single year, even though we've been trying to do something about it for nearly a hundred years in America. But a hundred years now, we've been waging this war on drugs, trying to remove drugs from our society and from our culture so that we can remove the negative effects that we experience from drug abuse and from drug or substance use disorder and behavioral addictions in our society. Unfortunately, the way that we've been going about it is not solving the problem. If anything, it's actually making the problem much worse. Unintended consequences of waging this war on drugs actually makes the problem worse. I was thinking about how to understand this. I mean, I, I think a lot about why is the current situation only getting worse? Why are the solutions that we're promoting and this war on drugs only compounding the situation? Why hasn't it gotten better over the many decades that we've been trying to make changes and do something about it? And it made me think of, here's an example, here's a metaphor that we can think of to kind of understand what's going on with the problem. If I have this cup, this is a great cup and I use it every day, but if I have this cup and it starts to leak, and I want to solve the problem and not deal with the mess that it makes because something is leaking out the bottom, there's really two ways that I can move beyond this problem and, and not suffer the consequences of the liquid or the juice or the tea or whatever leaking out of the bottom. The one way, the obvious way would be to fix the leak. But there's another less obvious way that I could stop the uh, the liquid from coming out of the bottom and stop the mess that it's making on my desk and stop the, the, the paperwork or the electronics that it might ruin because of the liquid coming out of the bottom, the less obvious way to prevent those consequences would be to remove the liquid from inside of this container. Now, if I remove the liquid, absolutely, I won't have to worry about liquid dripping out of the bottom. If there's nothing in the cup to drip out, then I won't have to worry about it dripping out of the bottom. I won't have to worry about it damaging the paperwork that's on my desk or potentially damaging the electronics that are on my desk. But then I've effectively lost the use of this container or this cup. The thing that I want to use it for, I won't be able to use it for because now there's no liquid inside. So I've avoided the negative consequences, but now I've lost the function of this cup. Well, I think that approach is what the war on drugs approach has been for the last many decades. We're warring against the thing that's inside of it. We're trying to remove the drugs or remove, in this example, remove the liquid from the container, thinking that if we remove the drugs, we'll remove all the negative consequences of what drugs create uh, in our society. The, uh, the, the social consequences, the financial costs, the, uh, the emotional costs, the life costs, the, the economic consequences that, that happen in our society. We think if we remove the drugs, we'll remove all the consequences. Unfortunately, that's not true. That's not even, that's not realistic. That really ignores the root of what addiction is and why people seek something external to their body. It's a mechanism that humans seek when they are challenged, when they are stressed, when they have experienced trauma, when they have some consequence of something that's going on in their life that gives them some problem inside, some pain or some form of suffering inside. And that's when they seek some substance or behavior that's external to their body to deal with that internal turmoil or that pain or that suffering. By removing the drug or a drug, we're not removing the problem. We're only removing what is potentially a solution. I mean, when somebody becomes addictive to a substance or behavior, that's actually a solution for the pain that they're experiencing. And if we remove one solution, I mean, I'm not saying suggesting that there's not a lot of negative consequence that comes from these solutions, 
But if we remove one solution or one mechanism for the person to deal with that pain and that suffering, they're only going to seek another one. And we've seen this as we've exhausted or as we've successfully removed certain substances from different communities, whether it's on a small scale or a mass scale. If we remove one substance, people are just going to find another substance, another means of escaping or avoiding or numbing from that internal pain. And if we remove this, whatever the, the drug that's in the headlines today, another drug or another behavior is only going to replace it. We can't remove all of the ways that somebody can avoid or escape or numb their internal pain. What we need to do instead, instead of waging this war on drugs, instead of waging this war on the thing, trying to remove that, I suggest that we instead wage a war on the wanting of drugs. Now it's a very simple semantic shift in what the war is about or what the focus is, but it's a tremendous philosophical shift on how to address the problem and how to move forward. The war on wanting drugs begs the question, why does somebody want drugs? And if we want to remove or reduce somebody's wanting of that drug, somebody's need or that desire to escape or deal with that pain or deal with the consequences of the life experience that they've had so far, then that begs the question, like, how do we help that person? How do we help that individual? deal with that internal pain so that they're not wanting that need for escape. If we reduce the demand for the drugs and for these things that are creating these negative effects in our society, then we can deal with the problems. Then we can also eradicate the problems. Back to this cup, if taking the drugs out is not a solution because taking that water out is not a solution because now we effectively use, lose the use of this container, we're kind of doing the same thing with an individual. If we're trying to just take a drug or some drugs out of the equation, we're leaving a person who's still in tremendous pain, tremendous suffering, still has something inside of them, some source of pain, some void that is preventing them from engaging in life the way that they want to and the way that they deserve. Something that's preventing them from living the, or being that member of the community, being that member of, the, of their family, making that contribution, just loving and enjoying life because they still have that need inside. And if all we do is remove that form of escape or remove that temporary solution that they found, we're not helping them deal with the problem. We might eradicate some of the consequences. We might eradicate some of the overdoses. We might eradicate some of the financial, the economic costs, but we're not solving that problem. We're certainly not helping that individual get to a better place. And we're not, and we're not in the grand scheme of things, we're not doing what's best for our community, and our society, because we're not helping that person become whole. Or we're not helping that person get back to a productive place, a place where they can live and contribute and enjoy the life that they that they were given and contribute to the society so if we instead remove the wanting of those drugs by looking at those deeper issues and those deeper reasons and provide some other resources to move beyond that pain and that suffering that they're trying to escape from that would much be like repairing the hole or the leak in the container that wanting of drugs is uh, is the same as just uh, uh, preventing the liquid from dripping out. So now if we do that, if I can somehow patch a hole so that this doesn't continue to leak on my desk and cause those negative problems, we can still use the container. I can still use this cup the next day. I can still pour my liquids in there and use it as intended. If we help the individual move beyond those sources of pain and suffering, then that individual can become whole again and we can still, not that we're using individuals, but that person can still be used in society by making a contribution to society and avoid those negative consequences. They can become whole, they can enjoy their life, they can have that fulfilling uh, and meaningful life. If we want to understand how to avoid or how to wage a war against the wanting of drugs, we need to look at the cause of drugs. And that's the, the huge philosophical shift, the cause of abusing drugs. That's the huge philosophical shift that we can make simply by changing the semantics of what we're warring against. If we want to better understand why people resort to the drugs or the behaviors that they do, we need to look at the reasons that it creates it. And one of the reasons this has been a problem, one, and this is going to be a huge challenge. It is a small shift. It is something that will make a tremendous impact or a tremendous difference, but it's challenging. Addiction itself is a very complex issue. It's complex because though addiction might look the same when it manifests, it might show up or appear the same in somebody's life. The reason that they've become addicted to a substance or behavior, the, the, the source of the pain or suffering or discomfort is as varied as the number of people that are exhibiting those addictive behaviors. An estimated 30 million adult uh, Americans today 
are struggling with active addiction. But those 30 million people, that's 30 million different combinations of experiences or of conditioning or of reasons for their pain and for their suffering and the reason that they've exhibited or now manifest that addictive behavior in their life. The behaviors themselves might look the same from one person to another, but the reason that person became addicted, the two people became addicted, is gonna vary tremendously on that person's experience. There's four major contributing factors to when somebody becomes addicted. We can look at the whole, uh, the whole of somebody and the influences are either gonna be biological, sociological, uh, uh, psychological or spiritual. But for the person that becomes addicted, they might have a different combination of those four. For one person, it might all be biological. For another person, it might all be sociological. Another person might all be spiritual. For many other people, it might be a combination of two or three or a little bit of all four. If we can dive more deeply into what these these causes are these contributing factors then we can come up with solutions and resources and help somebody get the help that they need so that they can stop wanting and really needing those drugs or those behaviors in order to survive the day and in order to cope with or deal with the pain and suffering that's inside small philosophical shift but if we can focus our attention instead of warring on drugs or warring on the escape and focus our attention instead on why people want the drugs to begin with, why people want those behaviors or really need those behaviors in their life to begin with, then we can make some real progress. Then the number of overdoses won't continue to increase. Then the amount of pain and suffering won't continue to increase. And instead, the contribution that people can make, the lives that people can live, the joy and the fulfillment and the happiness that they can experience in their life will increase and we can finally move beyond this trend where addiction is becoming worse and worse every year and taking a greater economic and personal toll on our lives and on our community so small philosophical shift but if we make this then there's promise for a better future then there's hope for some real change some real impact and we can really see a future where people won't have to endure that amount of pain and that amount of suffering if you ever wondered why the war on drugs has been a an abysmal failure over the last many decades that we've been waging it this is this is why because it focuses on the wrong thing and it doesn't even it can't even provide a solution if all we're looking for is the war on drugs and removing drugs from our society or from our community that's not going to solve the problems that we really need to address and make that lasting impact the lasting change please share your comments please share this video and please reach out to me if there's anything i can do to serve you or somebody that you know and love and uh, that can use some help appreciate it